Did you know that the filter is the heart of your aquarium and choosing the wrong one could cost the lives of your fish? Today you will discover everything about aquarium filters, so you'll never make that mistake again. Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Let's start with the basics. Why is a filter so essential in an aquarium? Imagine the aquarium as a closed ecosystem. Unlike nature, where rivers, lakes and oceans have natural systems to recycle waste, in an aquarium we are the ones who have to maintain the balance. And the filter is responsible for that. Do you agree, Rick? Of course, I agree. I can't even imagine an aquarium without a filter. As you said, the filter is the heart of the aquarium. But explain why. What is its function? The filter has three main functions. The first is mechanical filtration, which is basically like a vacuum cleaner. It removes large uh, particles, leftovers, food, um, fish waste and pieces of dead leaves. Without this step, the water would quickly become cloudy and dirty. The second function, and in my opinion the most important, is biological filtration. Here, the filter is a real hero. It provides a home for beneficial bacteria that converts toxic substances like ammonia and nitrates, which are deadly for fish, into nitrates, which are much less harmful. This process is known as nitrogen cycle. Finally, there is chemical filtration, which is optional and removes invisible impurities. For example, when you use activated carbon or a resin in the filter, you can eliminate odors, medication residues or even heavy metals present in the water. Each of these functions is vital for the survival of the ecosystem in your aquarium. But can you have an aquarium without a filter? Like, to simplify things? Yes, Rick, in theory, it's possible, but only for very small aquariums with a lot of manual work, because you would have to change the water frequently and control the parameters very carefully. For most aquariums, especially the largest one, uh, the filter is essential. It's the equipment that keeps everything stable for our fish and plants to live healthy. And what types of filters are there? Explain it to me like I know nothing. Or maybe I really don't know. Let's explain the different types of filters. Now that you know the importance of the filter, let's get to what really matters. The different types of filters and how to choose the ideal one for your aquarium. I will explain the seven main types of filtration. Don't go anywhere to find out what they are. But don't just say what they are. Also mention the pros and cons and dive deeper into how each one works, okay? Of course, Rick, let's do this. Internal filters are probably the most popular among beginners. And why? Because they are easy to use and relatively inexpensive. They sit inside the aquarium, usually attached to the side or in the background with suction cups. So they take up internal space, but this is offset by their simplicity. These filters pull water into them where it passes through a filter material and capture particles and serves as home for beneficial bacteria. For example, imagine you have a 60 liters aquarium. An internal filter can provide enough mechanical filtration to keep the water visually clean. And depending on the model, it might include sponges or ceramics to support biological filtration. However, its capacity is limited. For larger aquariums, you'll notice that the efficiency drops and the filter may need to be cleaned more often. What's your opinion on these filters? One common criticism of internal filters is that they can be visually intrusive and take up space inside the aquarium. Personally, I don't like them and would recommend this type of filter. 
not only I do not like uh, their aesthetic inside the aquarium, but I also think that keeping the dirt filtered inside the aquarium doesn't make sense. But that's just my opinion. Now let's talk about sponge filters. They are very simple in design, but incredibly effective when used properly. If you've ever seen a sponge filter in action, you will know it's basically a sponge connected to an air pump or circulation pump. Water is drawn uh, through the sponge uh, where large particles are trapped. And at the same time, the sponge serves as the perfect habitat for beneficial bacteria. Sponge filters are very popular in breeding aquariums or shrimp tanks. Why? Because the current they create is gentle and doesn't pose a danger for fry uh, or small shrimp. Also, they are easy to clean. Just remove the sponge and rinse it in water from the aquarium itself. And contrary uh, to what many think, they are not just for beginners. Many advanced aquaristics um, rely on them for support aquarium or as additional filtration. And what about these? What's your opinion on these filters? My opinion about these filters is that they should only be used in shrimp tanks, breeding tanks, fry growing tanks and hospital aquariums. Otherwise, I completely advise against them. Another downside is that they don't offer chemical filtration and their uh, mechanical filtration is limited. So, they are ideal as a supplement, but perhaps not the best option for filtering a main aquarium. Hang-on filters are a fantastic solution for those looking for something efficient and easy to maintain. They hang on the edge of the aquarium and draw water into an external compartment where um, it goes through different filtration stages before being returned to the aquarium. The great advantage of hang-on filters is their versatility. With them you can customize the filter media, adding activated carbon, sponges or ceramics according to your aquarium needs. Since they don't take up space inside the aquarium, they leave more room for fish and plants. However, they do have a limitation. The vast majority of them are not as powerful as the canister filters we'll discuss later and may be insufficient for larger aquariums, but for aquariums up to 200 liters they are a very practical option. Why did you say the majority? Are there some that are sufficient for larger aquariums? Yes, I'm a fan of them. The Seacal Tidal filters, especially the Tidal 75 and Tidal 110. These two are on par with many canister filters. Just to give you an idea, the Tidal 110 pumps 2000 liters per hour and has a capacity for more than 3 liters of filter media. Wow, it really competes with many canister filters on the market. It's true, it's very good, but let's move on to the next filter. Canister filters are considered the elite of filtration. They are external and have a high filtration capacity, making them ideal for medium and large aquariums. They work like true water treatment plants with space for several types of filter media. This means you can adjust the filtration exactly to your aquarium needs. One of the things I like the most about canister filters is the ability to have ceramic layers to maximize biological filtration. They are also extremely quiet, making them perfect for spaces like living rooms or bedrooms. However, they are more expensive and require more skills uh, for installation and maintenance. Even so, they are indispensable for demanding aquariums. And you? What do you think of these canister filters? 
As I said earlier, these filters are the elite of the aquarium filtration. It depends on the filter, as some are more powerful than others, like all of them. However, it's up to you to choose the one that best fits the volume of your aquarium. I've said many times here on the channel that for me a filter should filter at least five times uh, the volume of the aquarium water. And if possible, I would double that capacity, buying a filter that processes eight to ten times the volume of the aquarium's water. That would be ideal. That would be fantastic. The problems with filtration would be over. I wouldn't say they'd be over, but they would definitely be reduced. No doubt about that. Are there any more types of filters? Yes, there are more. Let's go to the next one. Let's now talk about the filtration system that was very popular in the past. But also, it's not commonly used today, it still has its merits. Under gravel filtration. This system uses a perforated plate places beneath the substrate, connect to a pump or suction column. The water is drawn down through the substrate which acts uh, like a large filter medium. This way is not only trapped uh, particles but also promotes excellent biological filtration thanks to the colonization of beneficial bacteria in the substrate. This system uh, is discreet, taking up zero visible space in the aquarium and promotes efficient biological filtration. It's economical and simple to use, but it can accumulate debris in the deeper layers of the substrate, making cleaning difficult. It works best uh, with coarse uh, substrates like gravel, as fine substrates like sand can clog and impart water flow. That system is really strange. I've never heard of it before. It's true, it became uh, less popular due to the better performance of the filters we've mentioned so far, but it was widely used a few years ago. This system is recommended for small or medium aquariums with peaceful fish like petras or guppies. However, it's not ideal for uh, densely planted tanks, as the roots can interfere with water flow. I'm getting excited about so many systems I didn't know about. You really learn a lot here. Is there more? Yes, I still have two more to talk about. Here comes the next one. And now let's talk about the system that's gaining more and more popularity, especially in larger aquariums and more customized setups. Overhead filtration. As the name suggests, this type of filter is installed above the aquarium. Basically, it's a box or compartment placed at the top of the aquarium, where the water is pumped uh, into it and passes through different filter media before returning to the aquarium by gravity. It's a simple uh, and efficient system, but with great customization potential. That sounds good. You could even make it yourself with a large plant pot. And what are the advantages and disadvantages of this system? Overhead filters are easy to clean, allows you to customize the media and offer great filtration capacity. Additionally, they are more economical than canisters and don't take up space inside the aquarium. Visually, they are not as discreet, especially in minimalist setups. They can also be difficult to adapt in aquariums with lids and may create dead spots if the flow isn't well distributed. This type of filters is ideal for medium or larger aquariums, community setups or tanks with species that produce a lot of waste, like cichlids and goldfish. Perfect for those who want efficiency without investing in a sump. A what? 
Sump, what is that? A sump is just the best filtration system there is. Let's talk about it. Finally, we have some filters. Well, they aren't exactly filters, but complete filtration systems. Typically placed under the aquarium, sumps are additional tanks uh, where water passes through several chambers, each dedicated to a specific type of filtration. They are incredibly versatile and can support large volumes of water. The sump is a frequent choice in marine aquariums, but it's also very popular among freshwater aquarists. Despite being more complex to install and maintain, they offer impressive results. Wow! That's like having an aquarium inside another aquarium. That's the boss of filtration. It must not have any disadvantages, right? Like everything, it has both advantages and disadvantages. With the sump, you get high filtration capacity, supporting a large volume of mechanical, biological and chemical media. You can configure uh, the compartments according to the needs of the aquarium. It increases the total volume of the system, improving the stability of parameters. It also allows you to hide equipment like heaters, pumps and thermostats. And its maintenance is easy without interfering with the main aquarium. But there are disadvantages, such as the complexity of installation, which require uh, technical knowledge and planning to set up the system. There's also the risk of overflow, as if not properly designed, a pump failure could cause accidents. Also, this can be minimized uh, with adjustments. Water circulation can generate noise. And it has a high initial cost, uh, involving expenses with material and custom constructions. However, if you have the opportunity to set up a sump, you should not even consider any other type of filtration. Now that we've explored the different types of filters, how do you choose the ideal one for your aquarium? There's no one-size-fits-all answer, because it all depends on the specific needs of your ecosystem. So let's go uh, over the most important factors that will help you make the right choice. The first thing to consider is the size of your aquarium. A filter needs to be capable of processing the entire volume of water at least 5 to 8 times per hour. For example, if you have a 60 liters aquarium, the filter should have a flow rate uh, of at least 300 to four, uh, 480 liters per hour. For small aquariums up to 60 liters, although I don't like them, internal filters are sufficient because they provide the necessary capacity. To I, I would recommend an Angon filter instead. For medium aquariums between 100 and 200 liters, a good Angon filter would be ideal for its practicity and easy to maintain. For aquariums ranging uh, from 200 to 400 liters, canister filters start to shine. They have much higher capacity, can be customized and are great for keeping the water crystal clear. For even larger aquariums, above 400 liters, sumps are undoubtedly due to their versatility and high filtration capacity. The second point is the fauna and flora in your aquarium. If you have small fish, shrimps or fry, you need a filter that is gentle, with a soft flow and it doesn't harm or suck them in. This is where sponge filters stand out, because they are incredibly safe and still provide good biological filtration. 
On the other hand, if you're setting up a densely planted aquarium, you need a filter that doesn't interfere with the layout and keeps the water pristine. Canister filters are the ideal choice because you can hide them in the cabinet and customize the media to avoid organic waste buildup that could affect the plants. For community aquariums with a variety of fish species, hang-on filters are a great initial choice, offering a balance between cost and efficiency. But if you have large species or heavily polluting fish like African cichlids or goldfish, you'll need a more robust system. Here's a canister filter or a sound becomes essential to handle the amount of waste this species produces. Another crucial point is the time you can dedicate to maintaining the filter. Before I talk about the others, I'd like to say the undergravel filters are undoubtedly the worst in terms of maintenance, as access is very difficult. You have to practically uh, dismantle the aquarium layout to clean it. Internal filters and sponge filters are very easy to clean, but may require a frequent maintenance, especially in aquariums with many fish. Hang-on filters and overhead filters are more practical because you can remove the media without even getting your hands wet. On the other hand, canister filters and sumps offer much higher filtration capacity, but their maintenance can be more time-consuming and demanding. Also, it's less frequent than the others, to maintain a canister or sump, you need time and patience uh, to dissemble and clean the internal parts of a canister or regularly uh, monitor the different uh, compartments of a sump. If you know you won't be able to dedicate that time, it might be better uh, to go for a simple solution. <music> Lastly, we need to talk about budget. An internal, under gravel or sponge filter is an affordable solution for those starting out or with small aquariums. Hang-on filters and overhead filters offer more options and still relatively economical. Now, if you want to invest in long-term quality, canister filters are the premium choice, but of course with high price tag. And the sump, being a customizable system, can vary greatly in price depending on the size of your aquarium and the components you choose to use. Think of the filter as an investment in the health of your aquarium. Spending a little more now can save you from problems in the future. My brain is boiling with so much information, but I really feel like I now know everything I need to choose the perfect filter for my aquarium. I'm glad you understand, Rick. I'm very happy. After everything we discussed, the best filter is the one that balances the needs of your aquarium with your own conditions. Don't just be swayed um, by price or appearance. Choose a filter that will provide the ideal environment for your fish and plants without compromising your maintenance routine. Now is your turn. Do you already have your ideal filter in mind? Or do you still have questions? Write them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you. I reply to all comments. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell because we have much more content on fish keeping coming your way. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video.